Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Western Presbytery. Today I'm so glad and grateful to God that we have visitors from uh, the Synod Office led by the uh, Communication Secretary, the Reverend Goma. We are so grateful that uh, they have come to the Presbytery just to familiarize themselves to know the works that have been done in within this presbytery and uh, in within uh, their process of interacting with us I have uh, invited a few leaders that are, with, that are closer to the office and the church that together we may be able to share on the life and the work of the church in within this presbytery. Right over there I have uh, the former bishop, the Reverend uh, Munjita Kamuya, who is one of the people that will be able to share their experiences, their knowledge about uh, this presbytery. Next to the bishop, the former bishop, uh, Reverend Kamuya, I have also uh, Mr. Sirumesi, uh, Mr. Sirumesi Mubita, who is also one of the leaders uh, and also in charge of the CPDC. But now maybe I'll be able just to invite uh, the, 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 the former Bishop, Reverend Kamuya, just to share with us on the early missionary activities in within the Balosa land. Maybe at this point in time, I'll invite the Bishop, the former Bishop, Reverend Kamuya Munjita. Allow me to state that Paris Evangelical Missionary Society came in the western part of Barrosland in 1868 in Sesheke. And the, in the team that came comprised of two groups. The first group were the local evangelists that came from the Sotu. Because the Basotu people were very much interested to work and hear of the language that was being spoken in the Baros Front. You realize that the language which is spoken in the Sotu is a language, it's a similar language which is spoken in Baswana. It's a similar language which is spoken in so the language uh, attracted the mission in the sense that it was easier to uh, evangelize in a language that could be heard by everyone. And uh, as they traveled uh, from Lesotho to Sesheke, of course they have had some hurdles, but I'm not going to go through those hurdles. My interest is to talk about the mission, why they came. They came basically for three missions. The first mission was to evangelize the gospel. The second was to provide education. The third was to provide health. And when you look at the Western Presbytery, now called, by then it was the the Church of Barosland, you see these three elements being exposed or exercised in the areas or in the part of the Western Presbytery. We have in the Presbytery the mission stations. They are called mission stations because the people who were working there were the missionaries. Among the missionaries, you find that there were carpenters, you find that there were teachers, you find that there were nurses or doctors, if you like. When you go to Mwandi, you are going to find that missionary worked there. Actually, I did my thesis on Mwandi. It was very interesting because it's from a first aid box, it's now a hospital. And I wish also to say that 
because of the impact of the education that was provided by the missionaries, the Western part, men and women were, were given an opportunity to study and they, they knew how to read and write. And the, as the church expanded, it was difficult for the missionaries who came at that time because the missionaries, the reverence themselves were very few. So what they did was to engage the teachers whom they trained to be the head teachers in particular schools and then at the same time when it was Saturday and Sunday they would teach catechumen and uh, after that on Sunday they would continue to preach as, uh, as preachers and that's why the evangelist uh, was an important role of the church because their responsibility was to teach the people and when they have formed their congregation it was now the responsibility of a minister to nurture and look after that particular congregation and that's how the system was set you realize that in the paris evangelical missionary society rather in the Baros church there were stations which were also established Today, in the 21st century, we talk about uh, the youth programs. The youth programs were also programs that were given in the mission stations, like we had carpentry, where, where the people were being trained to build, to make chairs, to make pulpits, to make doors, to make window frames from hard timber, <coughs> like what we call mukusi. And those lasted for years. That's why when you go to certain missions, you are going to find that the, the pews which are there are meant out of Mukusi. And it could last for more than 100 years. So it was a program that was designed so that as, as the a gospel is being preached, it would reach the youth through skills, what you, you, you call now, vocational training but there were skills which were given by the missionaries the other part that the missionaries brought was the cognition to the women that's why if you if you go to western uh, missions you are going to find that there is the mission stations like Mabumbu where the women were being trained where the girls were being trained so that they will do educate and uh, uh, improve on the lifestyles of the girls. So issues like girls now, it's not uh, an issue which is a new thing. It is an issue that the church was practicing and the, uh, the parting knowledge to, to, uh, to the community. If you go to places like Sefula Sangre School, you are going to find that there are certain uh, programs which were being uh, done. Uh, like in Senanga, you find that there was uh, carpentry, there was uh, bricklaying, and uh, the, the church was interested in not only to evangelize, but also to improve on the life and the work of the church. So basically, those were the interests of the church. And the uh, uh, how I wish the current church would go back to the old mission that the church had. The mission to evangelize, the mission in education, the mission in health. You realize that many, at the time when the, the church was growing, after the independence of the Republic of Zambia, Many missionaries went back. One of the reasons that he, uh, made them to get back is because the training schools that were provided by the church could not be sustained because when the people were being trained, the government was taking those people who were trained and put them into the programs of the government. So the one of the reasons why the missionaries left was because they were discouraged because the education that was being provided to the local people the government was taking them 
So that led the church, the PMS, the missionaries, to surrender some of the schools without condition to the government. And that's why if you go to Moyo, you are going to find that the clinic which was there have been handed over to the government. If you go to Mabumbu, the clinic which was there have been handed over to the government. If you go to Sefula, the, the, the clinic which was there have been handed over to the government. If you go to Lealui, the clinic which was there have been handed over to the government. If you go to, uh, even here in, in Mulamba, the clinic which, which was there have been handed over to the government. If you go to Limulunga, the clinic which was there have been handed over to the government. That was because the missionaries felt they have had no money to continue training the people in, in, in health and in education when the government was taking up uh, the people who were trained. But it, it looked different and that's why probably today we would just say that school or that clinic had belonged to uh, or it, it was a property of the Barros Church, rather the United Church now. So that was one of the reasons why uh, some of the people left. Thank you. I pick it up from the, the mission background, which was being given by the former bishop, the Reverend the, the Kamuya. Allow me now to look at uh, this presbytery where we are now. We are talking about the Western Presbytery, having 23 active consistories where out of these 23 active consistories we have about 20 we have about 22 church workers that are on the synod payroll with one evangelist a local evangelist also serving the church in within these uh, 23 consistories of this presbytery Apart from that, as a presbyter, we also have eight retired church workers. All these eight retired church workers are still able also to carry out their mission assignments. And uh, uh, maybe apart from one who is uh, not uh, so strong, but is still able to, to do one or two things. This presbyter that we are talking about that we have heard of all these wonderful programs that the church has been doing. Where are we coming from in terms of leadership for this, for this presbytery? Uh, allow me also to mention to you that this presbytery, as we are seated here, it has uh, had about uh, nine uh, presbytery leaders, that is uh, the moderators, Trans, uh, transiting into the presbyter bishops. The first uh, moderator after our mission, uh, missionary partners left was uh, the Reverend Muchanz Angola, who became the first moderator of this presbytery. The second one was the Reverend Gilbert M. Musialela. The third uh, moderator was the Reverend Mubita Pumulo. From there, we had the Reverend N. M. Mangelele. After that, we have the Reverend Akufuna Akafekwa, who took the reins of this presbytery. After the Reverend Akafekwa came through the Reverend Oliver Mukalu. From the Reverend Oliver Mukalu came the Reverend Kamuya Munjita was just been talking. From there, we had the Reverend Luisi Sipalo. After the Reverend Luisi Sipalo came in the Reverend Luvinda Manyando. After the Reverend Luvinda Manyando now is the current bishop, the Reverend Roy Kanchele. This is how the presbytery has moved from the time when the missionaries left the, the reins of this presbytery. And today, after hearing all the missional assignments that have been there, <laughs> talking about the mission stations that are there, how is the situation like? 
one thing that will be uh, that, that, that will greet you whenever you visit any of our mission station is just to see that most of the infrastructure that have been there surely you can be able to say that they have outlived you know their lifespan much of them either some have just been demolished some are falling apart some are having cracks some buildings have been declared absolute that they cannot be occupied that is the scenario which is in most of the the mission station but then if the situation is like that the question is then what are we doing going forward because the mission was there the threefold mission of this of of of, of the mission here in Baloseland mainly was the propagation of the gospel was also attending to the educational needs of the community was also to attend to the healthy needs of the community those missional demands are still very much active because children are being born, communities are growing, these needs are still very much there. What do we do as a church? From 2019 as a church, we looked through our we looked through our strategic strategic plan for the United Church of Zambia. And after surveying through the strategic plan of the United Church of Zambia, we came up with our own strategic direction which would drive this presbytery as we attend to these things that are before us. One of our strategic direction is to build our financial uh, 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 capacities, you know, to build our capacities financially as a church. This is the area where before even the investment police before even the investment direction in the church was established, for us, I believe that as a presbytery, we dived into that and saw the need that we should be able to have our investment direction. Because if at all we are to do anything to these mission stations, believe you me, we need to have sufficient funds to attend to these buildings. So we came up with the investment with the investment committee, which will be looking at uh, the ways through which we can tap into the available resources to ensure that uh, we raise the resources. And among them was to look at our available buildings, change their face, you know, lift their, 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 their you know, look, renovate them, lift their facelift, and uh, ensure that they are able to be to bring in something into the church. We have embarked on this one, like here at Rivero. One issue that we have looked at is to ensure that we work on the buildings, invite the other people who want to come and do business with us. So that as they are doing business, the buildings are given life. And not only are the buildings given life, also from what we may be getting, we are able to plant into these other mission stations. Apart from that, we also looked at the the rebuilding of our mission infrastructure where we allowed each and every mission to ensure that we be seizing the opportunities because one fact that we have is that we have vast land we have plenty of land not only do we have plenty of land but we have land in prime areas and in within our direction we agreed that whichever mission station where we are we have encouraged the local leadership there to be looking for ways and means if at all there is anybody who would want maybe to to rent some land or maybe to do something and then be paying to the church so that that money in return goes back to work on the buildings i think one of the the the, the, the mission stations that have really benefited from this direction is senanga mission where we have received some some people who are working on some projects and we went into an agreement with them where they agreed that they would be able to renovate the manse renovate another building and also renovate another building meaning three buildings are to be renovated on top of what they are paying to the church so for us this is a plus because in terms of infrastructure 
at this mission station, we have seen that uh, there is such a great change. Apart from the, uh, uh, the rebuilding or maybe a, a renovating of our mission infrastructure, we have also ventured into a project where we'll be securing our pieces of land. One thing which is very common is that uh, most of our land around here is uh, owned you know, traditionally. But even when it is owned traditionally, we know that there is a way of securing it. So that in, in encroachments are not, you know, are not troubling us. Because currently most of our land, most of our lands, most of our pieces of land are under threats. Where encroachers are coming, but with this direction, I think each and every mission station has been strongly advised to ensure that we work with the royal establishment and see whether we can be able to secure these pieces of land from the encroachments. Apart from that, we also ventured into a program whereby we have to revisit our way of doing mission in terms of evangelism. Yes, we have been, we have been preaching, we have been having overnights, we have been having crusades, we have been having all sorts of ways of you know, evangelizing. But our question is, have we done enough up to this far? The question or the answer has always been no. Because we know the communities are still growing. Now the question is, how are we going now to do mission in a time such as this one? Where we have to impact these people. Where we have to touch the communities. And one of them is to ensure that we continue you know, visiting these communities that have not yet been, you know, visited in terms of our church structures. There we, that we can go and open up new, you know, uh, preaching points, new congregations. Now, when we open there, we are not just to leave them as, uh, you know, a, a preaching point that have to survive on, on, on their own, you know. Our view is that when these are opened, then there should be maybe somebody who is attached to them, maybe on local basis, so that such communities are helped, they are nurtured to grow, and then to continue even expanding further. Further than that, we also looked at what we called a healthy interaction between the late and the clergy, where both the late fully understand their role in this great church. And where also the clergy must be able to understand their place in within this church. Because we realized that the, the more who would continue, you know, maybe who would continue, the more who would continue not working together, what suffers, it is the church. So therefore, we ventured into a program where all of us have to feel part and parcel of what is happening in within this presbytery. So these are a few directions that we are there that we have opted to pick so that we can see how we move, we drive the agenda of this presbytery from where it used to be to where it is now. Where we are at Rilelelo today, we realize that the main agenda of this was to ensure that there is a place where the youths are able to be trained. Like as it was earlier on said, the skills training center, the, 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 the vocational training, where the young people are empowered with the skills, the carpentry, and so on and so forth. That dream has not yet died. We feel that going forward, such things must be done so that youths have got a place where they can be trained and be integrated into the communities so that they can be able to save when they are still energetic, when they still have you know, all the strength in within themselves, that they can be able to offer and save their country in, 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 in these areas. Apart from that, we know that at this Rilelero, it is one of the early places where people were, were taught from. Schools were here. You know, the priests, the nursery schools were there going, going, go, go, going forward like that. But those things as we are seated now, they are not there. And our vision is to ensure that those are also revisited so that this place can surely be a nurturing place 
can be a place where young people can be helped to plan for their future and be useful into this uh, nation and the generation they are in. Thank you so much. Um, my name is uh, Silmesi Movita. I am the son of uh, late Reverend Movita Mkwenda. Uh, the Reverend who, with other Reverends and the white man, Mr. Jinjax Bolans, established this center where we are now, Lile Lelo. I would want to first of all share with you that Lile Lelo has two meanings. Depending on how you pronounce it, when you say Lile Lelo, it means a place where you nurture the young. When you say Nilelelo, you say it's a place where you sit and plan. So you can see this world was really meant to suit a place where you nurture the youth and plan for them to become uh, better tomorrow. Nilelelo was established in 1966 in November to be precise, and it was actually shifting from Sefula, which was on the sideline compared to Mongo as the provincial capital of this place. And then the church thought it was better the youth movement or the youth affairs of the church be carried out in Mongo than Sefula. So this place was established. As my former Bishop Reverend Monjita has already said, it was purely meant for the youth development, not really as a Western Presbytery headquarters. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be a headquarters for the youth. In fact, I will tell you that most of the buildings that you see here, if not all, were built under the youth department uh, financial support. This place was able to have, uh, uh, the, the youth were running poetry, the youth department was running um, the filling stations too, the one that has uh, been removed from here, and the current Puma one in town. At the same time, um, under the same vein, the, the youth department, together with the building department of the United Church of Zambia, they had established the Charleston filling station. At that time, it was running under the central buying agency. It was a subsidiary of the church, the youth movement of the Barossi Presbyterian, then Western, now Western Presbyterian. I would just want to um, just say one thing. Yes, it was right to move the Presbyterian headquarters from Sefula then because the communication was very hard. But really the movement of the Presbyterian headquarters from Sefula to here in Mongo it killed all the work that the church was supposed to do for the youth. Because we had a garage, as I've said, we had a, a wood workshop, and who knows, in the 21st century, maybe we could have a, had a polytechnical school. But I think if we went back to the original plan, the mission of the church, let us look at the way the missionaries came in. Really, the missionary came with the, those three things, evangelism, uh, the health of the people, and uh, education. So, at the moment, our church is not, a, is, a look, is not looking at the progress of the youth, the young. I think this is the thing that we have to do. Other than giving them education, I think we should also look at the technical schools. I think we should seize the opportunity of the enabling this new government 
that we can ask to revamp even all our schools under this CDF so that uh, even what we are failing to do, we can do it. The church must move away from appeals and donations. The church must uh, be able to sustain itself financially by having, you know, this is the, um, financial raising ventures. As the, the former bishop retired, but not yet, um, he has articulated the affairs very well, that let us relook, go back to the drawing board and see how we can actually help the church sustain itself, help the youth grow the youth, because they are the, the leaders of tomorrow. So to, for them to become leaders of tomorrow, we have to start training them today to be for them to be very effective. I think at the moment that what I can say over Lilelelo. We have uh, maybe one more thing before I, I finish up. We have a, a lot of land mm. in the Western Presbytery where we can do a lot of things economically wise to raise money. We can actually even ask the government to revamp even our uh, primary schools. You can say the government is talking about uh, girl child education, but we had exclusively primary schools for girls, mm. Mabumbu and uh, Senanga. Those were mm. girls, so we knew the girl child education, even right before independence. Mm. Uh, and uh, even the skills the training. The church in the Western Presbytery, then Barosland, was offering skills in almost it is all primary skills. So it was actually uh, a plus that was uh, supposed to have been carried out, maybe replicated in all other parts of Zambia. Thank you so much. <laughs>